Hello everyone, welcome back to our channel. Today marks an exciting occasion as we present a compelling summary for you. Our focus centers on delving into the insights provided by James Cousy's and Barry Posner in their book, Learning Leadership. We hear a lot about leadership from the time we are in elementary school, when we have line leaders and pencil monitors. We quickly learn that those who show effort and take charge are rewarded with power. As we get older, the pressure to be a leader grows. Training for professionals and prioritize leadership skills. Ask us to list the ways we have led at school, at home, and in the community. But what if you don't see yourself as a leader? What if you're shy, nervous, or just don't like being in the spotlight? What if you feel like you don't have what it takes to be a leader? The author says that a lot of people feel this way, and a lot of people think that leaders are born, not made. In this summary, we'll look at his top tips for learning to be a leader in more detail. Let's dive in. Chapter 1. The Myth of the Born Leader As we talked about in the introduction, the idea of the born leader is very common in our culture. But the author argues that there isn't really such a thing. It's true that some people are naturally more assertive, which makes them good leaders, but it's not a choice between being assertive and being a leader. Truth be told, being a leader is more than just telling people what to do. One more important question that you see a lot on college forms. What problems have you had to deal with? What are your go-to responses to conflict? These five questions will help you learn more about yourself and your leadership skills. The best part is that everyone has these skills inside them. You just need to find them and use them. Once you've answered these questions, you might find it helpful to write them down. Writing things down helps us to remember them and make them stronger. This reminder can also help you keep your mind on what's important. This is especially helpful because there are so many conflicting ideas about what it means to be a leader. For example, many people think that being a leader means telling everyone else what to do or having power. Others might hold on to the false belief that every leader should act in a certain way or have a certain set of traits. All of these ideas are wrong. Make a list of your daily goals and remember that the most important thing is to always be learning. A good leader knows that being a leader is all about learning and getting better, and that this is a process that lasts a lifetime. So keep working on yourself and make sure that your questions reflect your daily goals. Chapter two, never stop learning. Leading is not limited to natural born leaders, as we discussed in the last chapter. It is important to keep learning and getting better as a leader. This chapter will talk about the phrase, leadership is about learning. Let's look at an example of this concept in action. Let's say you're a new author who wants to write the next great American book. Your book could be the only good thing about 2020 if you do it right. To do that though, you need some help and to find out more about what makes a good book. Learn about literary managers and find a good one. Think about the state of the literary market the most important writer's guide hasn't been changed since 2003, but you may have heard of it. Since nothing new has been added, use the best writing and marketing advice from 2003. What's wrong with that? To begin, the book market has changed a great deal since 2003. A lot of the big publishing companies from 2003 are no longer in business, and the best literary managers may not work for anyone or may not be the best in the business. The way people read and write may have changed since 2003. If it doesn't cover new styles, a writing book from 2003 is useless. This is particularly true for professional and personal growth, since staying the same stops progress and growth. It is important to always learn because if you don't, you won't be useful as a worker or teacher. For leading and helping others, it's also important to keep growing. After all, how can you help your team grow and get ready for the future if you're not ready for it yourself? To make your business more diverse and welcoming, think about what your workers and customers will need in the future. This plan works for both big businesses and nonprofits. 
What is the main goal of your business? By answering these questions, you can find places where you need to improve and come up with ways to do so. Chapter 3. Be open to constructive criticism. Everyone doesn't like being criticized, but sometimes feedback that is meant to help us grow can do just that. That's because there is a difference between someone telling us we're bad and feedback that is meant to help us improve. It's never fun to hear that we were wrong or that we should have done something better, even if it's true. But if we never admit our flaws and mistakes, we'll never learn and grow. It's easy to think that leaders don't need constructive criticism, especially not from other people. But the truth is that everyone needs advice and emotional support, no matter what stage of life they're in. That's why it's important to never feel like we're above getting help and advice from people who care about us. In fact, the author says that our relationships with others are what make us strong. Many people in leadership roles admit they're human, but being sincere actually makes your relationships stronger and makes people more likely to like and trust you. Don't try to look strong, sure of yourself, or perfect. Just focus on being real. When you're real and honest with yourself, you show others a few things. Being a leader doesn't make you mentally stable. Everyone has issues. It's not too important to accept that other people may have good ideas for making things better. Being a leader doesn't make you better. It makes other people better. Tell the truth and be open to helpful feedback. Taking feedback in a constructive way is part of our never stop learning philosophy. You can't grow if you never learn something new and realizing you can do better is the first step toward growth. In conclusion, you might feel like this book ended without giving you any clear steps on how to become a leader. But this isn't a step-by-step -step guide for getting a leadership position or giving yourself motivational, encouraging messages that will push you to take charge. Instead, this book is about developing the mental and emotional skills that will make you a good leader. You can start to develop those traits by breaking the myth of the natural-born leader. The truth is that anyone can be a leader, whether they're a CEO or a volunteer at an animal shelter. In reality, anyone can be a leader if they use their skills and gifts to inspire others. A leader also knows that you should always be learning and growing. Because of this, a good leader will always be looking for ways to get better and will try to be open and honest in everything they do. If you enjoyed a summary like this, don't forget to give it a thumbs up, subscribe to our channel and hit the notification bell to stay updated. Thanks for watching. Until next time, and happy learning.